Welcome back to Paul's stream. Now, before we went on that break, Victor, we had Mukhtar, a New Zabi analyst, who gave us um, his thoughts and an update on the situation in Kano and other states of the country. And other states of, uh, of the country. Now, let's bring in uh, security expert Oluafemi Aratokon, who joins us via Skype from London. Now, you are a security management um, a consultant. What is the first step? to be taking concerning this situation in Kano? Well, I think, uh, let me start from um, the condition in Kano is actually being erupted by thugs, but nevertheless, the idea of the police containing and controlling the crowd is appalling. Um, I don't think we have enough security on grounds to actually assess this for the start of the registration of the voting today. Uh, sorry, Ms. Aratokun, we didn't really get your thoughts on uh, the deployment of police officers. That was uh, just, it was pretty much uh, very faint. If you can come again. Well, it seems um, the internet connection seems to be poor, and it's uh, putting us under this beautiful conversation. But um, we still have with us, thankfully, um, uh, Mukhtar, who is in our Abuja studio. Mukhtar, um, so just uh, a moment ago, um, Mr. Ratakun was talking about um, the deployment of security officials. What has Ozabe gathered? What have you seen so far in terms of that um, deployment of security officials? Oh, oh. Okay, you, you, you know, um, we've recorded numbers of um, issues about uh, the deployment of security personnel. But I can assure you that most of the polling units in Kano have enough security because we've seen a polling unit in Region Lemu with more than six police, uh, police officers and two prison warders and one uh, road safety uh, uh, personnel. So... Most of these polling units have these issues because we've seen an issue in uh, Minjibu local government where the polling unit is having four police officers, four unarmed police officers, and the talks were there. The police could not do anything because the, the, the issue is these talks are, I don't know, they are on drugs, they are, and uh, despite the fact that the police are not armed, so they could not do anything. So most of the places have enough security. You know, you can't say all the places have enough security, but most of the places ha uh, have enough security. That's the four unarmed police um, officers that we were being told that would be at the polling unit and unarmed. The unarmed three uh, uh, that are going to stay 300 meters, that's what I don't know because we've not recorded any of that. Only the ones that are on monitoring that goes around the, the places. Because you see the case we, we've seen in Rijal Limu is a, is, a, is a case of monitoring police officers where a, a, a car is being loaded with um, uh, tom, uh, the ballot papers that are completed and the results were written and everything is intact. So... The police that are on monitoring team arrested the car and took the, the people away. Though most of the people that are in the car run and the police did not chase them or something like that. But for the deployments, you know, there were enough securities. I can't say enough per se, but in most of the polling units, there were enough securities. Because it's not all Kanu that is being interrupted by all this. There are some part of Kanu that the election is going smoothly as I speak now. But it's quite interesting that, you know, we didn't get this type of situation in, in the last the election last cycle. So I'm wondering how this has come to be at this time. And do you have any idea why? Mukhtar, if you're there. Of course he is. So Mukhtar, uh, what we're saying, what my was saying is that there was a, the pattern from the last election seems to be different from what is obtainable at this point in time. Is there any reason as to why that is? Uh, particularly, I, I can't say there is a reason, but I think people are beginning, our, our, our democracy system are beginning to take a shape. If I said shape, I mean, if you see the numbers of the highest case we've recorded is a case of uh, security, and um, the second case is the case of vote buying and vote selling. So that is to tell you the politicians are now aware that everybody's votes is being counted. So the next thing they will do is 
to um, a buy and sell vote. That is what is happening. So the buying and selling vote is what is causing all these issues of um, all the uh, politicians from both parties trying to say this one is doing this one, this, the other one is doing this one. So that Again. is to tell you that our democracy is taking another shape of our votes are being counted. So that's why the, the whole issue is bringing. But for, for, for last time, we only saw voter apathy. But because for now, we, uh, there are a lot of sensitization by both the politician, the INEC, the civil society, and, and what have you. So people have come out in mass to cast their vote. But the only problem is what we are seeing, that's the security issues of, um, uh, of talks coming in to interrupt the whole Issues. Mukhtar, speaking of security issues, let's bring back in uh, Arato Kongo, who joins us via Skype again. Now, you were trying to pass across a message the other time, but I'd like to ask you about m managing the situation, the security situation right now. What would you recommend? Oh, well, basically, I think what I should recommend is this. The overwhelming situation with the Commissioner of Police in every single state is so appalling that they need to recommend to have election commissioners separately for such events, except that we cannot really achieve the best result we want. That is number one. Number two, we need to understand one fact. The people perpetrating this act are not even up to a serious number. They are not even up to 50 or 100. So we really need to identify them and at least you know, have a total lockdown in such a way that you won't even near any police station next time. Or however, look for a way to allow them to perform their civil rights and go peacefully rather than you know, them allowing them to destroy the whole system and the process in place. We have got it wrong again, and INEX seems to have got it wrong, and the federal government seems to have spent money, which is not even worth it, with billions of naira being spent, and we can't really see anything to show for it. It's appalling, it's a disgrace, and I think we can learn from this. Uh, well, uh, I, I mean, I would disagree with you saying that it's not worth it, because, I mean, people are out there, you know, trying to see that, they, that their votes count, they, they vote someone who will lead them for the next four years. So, in my opinion... I mean, of course. Them. You yeah. can really see them. You can see them being scared, being afraid, because the moment the vote buying comes in, then it is not really what the situation anymore. I love the idea of people performing their civil rights. Don't get me wrong, please. We are a young democracy, and we are practicing it the way we should. But some elements in the system are hijacking it. This is where the problem lies. Oh, Victor, it, it is interesting that um, what uh, Arato Kwan just said, but. I think the people also need to own up to their responsibilities, like in Bochi, where we saw people defending their votes. Yeah. And at the end of the day, humans the are the ones perpetrating all of this. It could be scary. It can be scary. I'm not saying that people are the ones to blame, those not defending, for instance. I'm yeah. just saying that, you know, he's blamed because INEC, I... he's blamed the federal government. I'm saying we also have to mention that people, human beings, citizens, are the ones who are going out to disrupt so, well, you, have, you have to be safe at the same time. But, um, well, that's where we are. We'll have to say thank you to uh, Mokhtar Modibo as well as uh, Mr. Aratokun, who joined us um, from London uh, via Skype. Um, thank you to both of you for joining us on Pulse Stream this time around. But uh, this is where we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you very much again for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. And I'm Mayowa Oguzile. Please don't forget, tweet us right now. Thank you so much.